Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia Photographer, and today I'm coming to you from the editing computer. What I want to do is I want to do a tutorial on how I get my images ready for printing. Some people don't like to print their images. I do. I've done some prints the other day, and I stuck a, a collage on the Instagram about this, like this image here. I printed this image, and when I went to print it, the aspect ratio of an eight by 10 is different from the image I uploaded. And because of that, I had to sacrifice some of the bottom and top of the image. And I felt like the image looked more powerful with the full image and trimming off the bottom and top. Yeah, it really didn't hurt it much, but the, like the stripes of the shadows traveled on and it kind of just gives it that run out effect and kind of leads you in. And I've shortened that to get it on here. So I thought, it's about high time that I make some templates so that I'll have white border templates and I can figure out my crop before I ever upload them to the print sites or CVS even. But yeah, these are CVS prints. The prints typically come out a little darker. So if you want to get consistent print results, from the lower end or more budget friendly printing places like um, I use Shutterfly a lot. You, it would do you well to add about a third of a stop of exposure compensation on top of the edit because it's gonna come out looking just a little darker. Anyway, the program I use to do my, I guess you would call this Photoshop style edits is GIMP. I don't like Photoshop because I don't like paying a monthly fee for access to a program. Um, Jay Christina shows what happens if you don't pay that extortion fee every month. The access to your catalog of photos that they have on their cloud goes away and it becomes a problem. So I just edit on GIMP, which is open source and free, and it works great for me. And honestly, with the new versions of it, I haven't seen it crash at all. It, back in the early days, 2.6, things like that, it would crash. This is 2.10 and it is super stable. I have, like I said, I've yet to have trouble with it on Mac or PC. Now that that's out of the way, not sponsored by GIMP because it's open source and free. You can go find it, the GIMP.com, you can download it. I'm gonna create a new one, file, new. All right, what you're looking at here is the size of the image. Okay, and you can choose multiple different ways of measuring the size of the image. I'm gonna choose inches, not yards. That would be a huge image. But if I pick inches, cause I'm in the United States, you can choose, see it's doing an 11 by 14. All right, let's say I wanna do a 18 by 24, I'm pretty sure. Let's just do that, 18, 24. Now that's a, that's a pretty clean two by three ratio. That's really not gonna give me what I'm looking for, but it'll work. Actually, let's just back this down. Let's do, um, let's do a five by seven, why not? We'll do the landscape, seven, five. Okay, now it's telling me the pixel count right here at 400 pixels per inch for a five by seven print. When we go to advanced options, you can change that pixel count. If you don't wanna scale your images or crop them, and you just, you've already got all that figured out like you want, you can literally come in here and look and you can manipulate that pixel per inch until the smallest of these two numbers is your base image. So my smallest sensor size is 24 megapixel and that's the Z6 and it's a little over 4,000 by a little over 6,000. It, it runs over just a little on both. The lower number here is gonna end up being the seven inch side. So if we double this to 800, and just hit this, it immediately updates it and tells you the pixel size. So I'm at 5,600 by 4,000. So I need to go up a little more. You can run it through a calculator, but it's just, see it's 6,300 at 900. So what's 850? 5,950, 855, 5,985, 860, 6,020. All right, so 859's where we're gonna be. 6,013, 858, good Lord. Yeah, 6,006, there we go. What that does is that allows me to put any image I have full size on a five by seven. Now I just hit okay. 
and you're trying to create a large style, it doesn't matter. It, it don't just tell it okay. Okay, the first thing I want to do is change the background color. I'm gonna change it to yellow. Bucket fill that. There we go. Now we're gonna change our front color back to white because we're about to use it a bunch. We're gonna create a layer, tell it to, and we're gonna call it background white. And we're gonna do with foreground color, so your fill choices, tell it okay. Now we have a white layer. Now we're gonna do a quarter inch border. Tell it okay. And then we'll do a half inch border. I just gotta change the name. That way we know what the layers do. All right. And you can drag these by just clicking on one and pulling it down. It shows you where it's going to put it in the stack. These are just like Photoshop. This layer lays on top of this one, yada, yada, yada. Okay, I'm going to turn off these two and choose this one. Right click. If add to alpha channel is not a highlight, you know, if it's grayed out, it already has added the alpha channel. But if it hasn't been done yet, alpha to selection. You, you just click it. You want it to have the alpha channel. All right, once you get the marching ants around the perimeter, we're gonna select, I right click, I wanna shrink by 0.25 inches, tell it okay. Since we added an alpha channel, it'll allow me to delete the stuff inside the selected area. Delete. <laughs> now we'll turn on the border, rinse and repeat. We're gonna alpha the selection, delete that. Okay, as you see, the background color is showing now we select, right click, select none. That gets rid of the marching ants. Okay, now we have a half inch border or a quarter inch border. So now we need an image. Let's go into files and grab us an image. All right, the reason I kept original was because I knew I was doing a five by seven. Now let's see here. This is stacked in the wrong spot. I have to have it underneath my borders. The borders are turned off currently. So if I turn on my borders, it immediately creates a bordered image. The dotted lines you see represent the actual image layer I'm clicked on. And you can see here that the flower is composed well, what have you. But if I turn off all that, I'll turn on the image. You can see the image is not as wide as this particular one. It's not as wide as my base template. So if I put a quarter inch border on it, it gets rid of that and it fits suddenly, and it's a five by seven. So when I go to print this, it'll print five by seven. I like using curves because it's easy. I'll just add some contrast here like that. Look at there, tell it okay. Filters, enhance, unsharp mask. It don't take much. You can put much unsharp mask on it, it looks goofy. But now I got the flower sharpened up some. And if I wanted the flower to be a little more prominent, which I kind of like that because it's balanced with this one in the background. But you can see how easy it is to do that. And then you just file, export as, and then give it a name. And then we're going to call it Clover um, 5x7. Or, or, yeah. And that way we know what it is. Export it. And then if I'm printing, I run my JPEG quality all the way to 100. That way you get maximum resolution out of your sensor. All right, now we've saved it. Now I'm gonna click, yeah, I wanna save as. And I'm gonna call this one. Uh, five by seven. Landscape. Template. Save. And there it is. Now I have a saved template in the landscape form. You know, these work really well. So when you go to your uh, company that you get to print, like I'm using Shutterfly, and you see that I've pulled an image in, and the image is a square image. So if I add a 12 by 12 here, it's gonna show. This is the actual image. If I pick it, you can see the crop options fill the whole image, because I took these images as squares. These are reference photos of a clock I'm working on. Well, if I print it in eight by 10, you look, I can't select the whole image. See, if I go to the center, I can't drag these out 
and create a white edge on both sides and get the whole image on an eight by 10. It won't give me the choice. That's what's driven me to create those templates. It recognizes the white areas of the image as part of the image. And it'll allow me to print a non matching aspect ratio image to this aspect ratio because print paper is not aspect ratio to sensor size for some reason. I don't know why, but it ain't. So that's what I wanted to do today was show you how you can get your whole image printed and you can have the images if you like white bordered images and some people really do, you know, a lot of artistic photos are typically printed with white borders. Look at Evan Rance. He does all of his street photography that way. It's just his style and it looks good. And it also, if you're going to sell prints, I've noticed uh, a lot of guys that do sell prints will print white borders because it gives them somewhere to sign their name that doesn't um, get on the print itself. You can actually see the signature as well as it doesn't have to be written on the print. That's what I wanted to go over today was to show you how this kind of balances if you create your template and then you can fit your image into that template, export it and do it that way. Of course, they say every time you process an image, you lose a little quality and there's probably truth in that. But when you go to put a, put, if you're going to print it as an eight by 10, you're going to have plenty of print quality. So with that, this is David, the Georgia photographer, and I appreciate you guys watching. And if you like the video, I appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't done it yet, reach down there and hit that subscribe button. It'd be awesome. And until next time, get your camera out and go take a picture with it. All right.